Hello friends, welcome to the kitchen table. I have an excellent deck tech for you today, uh, simply because I enjoy this deck very much. This is Frontier Goblins, one of my favorite decks to play. Very fast, very fun. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with creatures. First off, we have Frenzied Goblin. It's a one drop for a 1-1, one, one, but it has a great text. Uh, whenever it attacks, you may pay one mountain. If you do, target creature can't block this turn. Excellent. If you've got a Siege Rhino standing in your way and you want to sneak in a little bit more damage or you want to make sure that the one creature that they have doesn't jump in front of your Goblin Pile Driver, this is the way to go. Great, great, great. Uh, so we're running four of those. Four Frenzied Goblins. Next up, Goblin Glory Chaser. Another pretty good Goblin. I'm going to go through just the basic Goblin deck first. Then we'll talk about cards that we might switch out for specific new or fun things. Uh, Goblin Glory Chaser might go. The, the only thing that I hesitate about it is it is a one drop. And I want these goblins to come out fast. So I hate to lose a one drop. But we'll see. We'll talk about it. Um, so it's a 1-1 one, one for one. It does have Renown. Renown 1. So if it gets damage in, then it becomes a 2-2. Two, two, which is... Good. 2-2 two, two for 1. That's great. Um, it doesn't have haste, so you can't sneak it in on the first turn. It's kind of it's kind of difficult, uh, but it is a 1-drop, so it's there. Foundry Street Denizen. 1-drop. Uh, 1-1. One, one. Whenever another red creature enters the battlefield under your control, this guy gets plus 1, plus 0 till the end of the turn. Excellent. We have ways of getting many goblins in on one turn, of course. If you bring in three goblins, this thing becomes a 4-1. Uh, great way to sneak in a bunch of damage if it can't be blocked. So, uh, auto-include. We got four of them. Great, great. Um, Reckless Bushwhacker. This, this card is excellent. It's it's still played in standard in some in some instances. It is an excellent excellent. Um, I think it might see modern play. I believe uh, in the modern goblin deck, uh, just a great goblin. So it's a little bit complex. It's a three drop. It gives you a two one, power one uh, power two toughness one, but it has surge two. If it is the second spell that you cast this turn, you can pay two instead of three to get it out there, and it has haste, and whenever it enters the battlefield, if the surge cost was paid, other creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and gain haste until the end of the turn. So everybody gets haste, everybody gets plus one, plus zero. Um, a great, it's just a great one-turn anthem. Everybody gets bigger and they just swing in because they all have haste. It's great. And of course, goblins want to attack constantly. There's no need to not attack unless you're just going to lose everybody and not do damage. If you can do a little bit of damage, get in there. Do it. Uh, yes, so Reckless Bushwhacker, awesome. Goblin Pile Driver, another great goblin from the past. Uh, Goblin Pile Driver has protection from blue. It's a two drop, one, two. Um, whenever it attacks, it gets plus two, plus zero for all other attacking goblins. So it could be like a nine, two all of a sudden if you've got four other goblins swinging in. Great, great goblin. Uh, we got four of those. Moving on. Subterranean Scout. Sub Subterranean Scout works really well with Goblin Pile Driver. The reason is, when it enters the battlefield, target creature with power 2 or less can't be blocked. So, of course, when you play Subterranean Scout, you name Goblin Pile Driver as the card that can't be blocked. Because it doesn't receive its pluses to its power until it actually goes to the attack phase. So, make sure you play Goblin Pile Driver first. Then the next turn, Subterranean Scout, make Goblin Pile Driver unblockable, and then when it swings in, all the other goblins give it pluses so that it does a bunch of damage on its one swing. Subterranean Scout, great. Um, we're running four. And of course, Goblin Rabble Master, another excellent choice. 
Other goblin creatures you control attack each turn if able. This is not a negative. Don't think of this as a problem. You should be attacking every turn anyway. Uh, these decks sort of get a reputation as decks that don't take a lot of thought to play. And in this specific case, that's probably kind of true. <laughs> you need to get in there. Um, but it's still fun. It's really fun to play. If you're introducing friends to the game or, or, or you just want to sit down for a quick match, this is definitely the way to go. Very fun. Um, at the beginning of combat, on your turn, put a 1-1 Red Goblin creature token with haste onto the battlefield. Excellent. So you gain another attacker every single turn after what you may have already tapped mana and put out on the table. That's excellent. Um, and that's even if the Goblin Rabble Master doesn't attack, just to say out loud. Now it needs to, because it is a Goblin. But you get that Goblin every single time. Um, what I should say is, on the first turn that Goblin Rab Rabble Master is paid, it has summoning sickness. It cannot attack. But you still get that free attacking Goblin. Um, whenever it attacks, it gets plus one, plus zero until the end of the turn for each other attacking Goblin. This is another great choice for your subterranean scouts. Just like Co Goblin Pile Driver. Goblin Pile Driver gets a larger plus. But if you don't have a Goblin Pile Driver out there, go ahead and name your Goblin Rabble Master. Because it won't get the pluses until it swings in. All right, moving on to instances and sorceries. We have two sorceries. First one is Dragon Fodder. Put two 1-1 one, one red Goblin Counter tokens on the battlefield. Creature tokens, sorry. Creature tokens on the battlefield. It's a two-drop, so you're paying one for each of them. It's a must. To get two Goblins, just like that, excellent and out of one card this helps you not run out of cards so quickly which is the worst thing for these aggro decks they run out of cards after like turn four you don't have any cards in your hand you're out of gas as they like to say so this helps with that because you get two goblins for one card excellent we're running four uh, hoarding outburst we're running four of those as well, of course. Put three 1-1 one, one Red Goblin Creature Tokens on the battlefield, and it's a three drop. So, absolutely. One card for three goblins? Love it. The way to go. Next up. This is actually the last card in the deck. This is, So, you have a choice, of course. Um, Stoke the Flames. If you want to win consistently, Stoke the Flames is a great way to go. It is a four drop, but it has Convoke. So you can tap your own creatures to help pay. You, you could literally tap four goblins and cast this thing for free, as it were. Because goblins, most goblins don't have haste. So on the first turn, they're wasted unless you need to chump block. Keep that in mind. You might need to chump block. But on the first turn, they're wasted. Tapping four of them to throw out Stoke the Flames for free, maybe get rid of a creature or do a bunch of burn to the player, it's great. Redirect that burn to hit one of their um, Planeswalkers, it's great. But there is collateral damage, which is a flavor win, straight up. If you're just playing for fun, collateral damage is awesome. It's a one drop. As an additional cost to cast collateral damage, sacrifice a creature. Collateral damage deals three damage to target creature or player. So you have to discard a goblin straight up. Uh, and the picture is a little goblin blowing himself up, trying to fire a cannon. That's why it's a flavor win. It's awesome. Um, not as good as Stoke the Flames, but a lot of fun. So pick whichever you like. Good, so that is the basic core goblin deck. Probably stoke the flames over collateral damage. But I want to talk about two other cards that see play. Both of them are anthem cards. Obelisk of Erd. This is from 2015, okay? It has Convoke. Once again, you can tap your goblins to get this thing into play. It's a six drop. So it's expensive, okay? But you can tap half mana, half goblins, whatever. Um, as it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Of course, you're going to choose goblins. Creatures you control of the chosen type get plus two, plus two. This is fun. This is great. All goblins suddenly have plus two, plus two. 
amazing. This could win the game. The minute this goes down, swing in with a bunch of guys. The problem is you had to tap a bunch of guys to get it. It's expensive. But there is another option. And that is, it's a new card, Metallic Mimic. And I've been very excited about this. It's a two drop. Now, the first thing I'd want to do is just replace Goblin Glory Chaser with Metallic Mimic. Goblin Glory Chaser is a one drop. Metallic Mimic is a two drop. So you're losing a little bit there. Your mana, your average mana cost just went up. Okay? Not a lot, but it did go up. So, Metallic Mimic enters the battlefield. Choose a creature type. Of course, you're going to choose goblins. Metallic Mimic is the chosen type. So, it becomes a little metal goblin. Very cool. Each other creature you control of the chosen type enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. So, you only get plus one, plus one, not plus two, plus two, like the obelisk gave you. But, it's a counter. So, even if they kill Metallic Mimic, you still keep the counters. Okay, another negative for Metallic is it only affects the ones that come into play after you've played the Mimic, not the ones that were already on the battlefield, whereas the Obelisk just helps everybody the whole time. So, interesting. I am playtesting right now with Metallic Mimic. I like it. It seems to be working. I enjoy it. Obelisk of Erd... I took out eventually. It's expensive. It really is. If you're playing, I put it in the sideboard because there are times when I need to play a longer match and this can help me get, Obelisk can help me get out of that. But it's, it's up to you. These cards need to be considered when building a goblin deck, crazily enough. Um, let's get on to mana base. We are running 20 mountains. Very simple, very affordable. I do need to say, though, there are people who run fetch lands in monocolored decks, particularly um, these aggressive kind of decks, right? Decks that want to win by turn three or four. And the reason they do that is because they want to thin the deck, when they play a fetch land instead of a regular mountain, and remember, when they drew that fetch land, they would have just drawn a mountain instead because that's what they replaced, right? They have 16 mountains and four fetch lands. So when they draw a land, a fetch land instead of a mountain, they play that, they crack it, they go into their deck and they pull out a mountain and they play it. So what they've done is lowered the amount of mountains that are still to be drawn. Once you have played a good four mountains, you don't want to draw any more. You're already running out of cards. The last thing you want to do is draw a mountain off the top, so now you have five, and you can't affect your board state in any way. You just swing in with the same old goblins and lose more of them do less damage rather than drawing, say, a Reckless Bushwhacker. Um, maybe that's not the best example because it'd be nice to play it uh, as a second card. But shoot, even a Frenzied Goblin or a Foundry Street, um, Foundry Street Denizen or a Hordling Outburst, there are other cards that you'd rather draw than a Mountain. So, hypothetically speaking, if the first four lands you were to draw were all fetch lands that could get a Mountain, and you played those four, and you pulled four out of your draw pile, technically you would have like 12 mountains left in there instead of the 16 you would have had. So your chances of drawing a mountain have gone down from the 16 you had to the 12 you now have. So mathematically speaking, you could win more consistently by playing fetch lands. To me, it seems kind of minuscule. I'm not that competitive, so I just run the mountains. I save the fetch lands for the uh, landfall deck, which I'll do a tech, deck tech for later. Um, so I just run the mountains, but there is a case for running fetch lands, and it needed to be said out loud. Good. Let's get on to sideboard just real quick. Um, I'm just running the sideboard that we run for standard burn decks, for generic red decks. 
Um, we got some roast in there in case you try to get rid of a seed rhino, maybe. Arc lightning in case you're doing some kind of a mirror match. You want to kill a bunch of goblins. Um, smash to smithereens, I think it's called, which um, destroys an artifact, right? In case you're going up something artifact crazy. Um, a bedlam reveler. Uh, if you need more card draw, if you are forced into a longer game and you realize you're going to need more cards, grab yourself the Bedlam Reveler and uh, try to run with that. Uh, I believe that is everything. I'm trying to go fast because I don't want these to get, I, I know they can get really long, so I'm trying to speed them up. Um, so I think that's everything. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button or subscribe, please. I've got already 15 excellent subscribers. I'm very proud of that and I'm very happy to have you guys. Um, thank you so much and have a great day.